Hi, this is Ron Martinson of ronmartblog.com, and I'm here today to talk to you about the Elytra Loom. So let's go ahead and start with this photo here. Uh, not an especially good photo, but one that actually is good to talk about. Um, I'm going to go ahead and revert it to the original settings here before we talk about it. And what I want to show you is this is exactly how it came out of the camera. Um, I made some you know, minor issues uh, with my focusing, um, but what I did manage to get was you know, a fairly decent um, amount of depth in the image, which you can see from this depth map. Depth map. Um, when you press the Lytro button, when you're actually out in the field, you'll uh, get a similar type of, something kind of similar to this with a um, blue and uh, orange region. And the blue region is the foreground and the orange region is the background. And to create depth, you want a good balance of both. And so if your uh, subject matter doesn't have um, both, then you probably want to use your DSLR or other camera for that photo and really focus on subjects that have um, you know, depth to them, uh, where you'll see this uh, variance. And so when you have this depth, um, one of the first things I usually do is try to set my initial focus point. I should have set this in the field, but due to the LCD screen being very bright and my not having a hood um, and the inability to zoom at runtime uh, when you're actually taking the photo, uh, it's can be uh, kind of tricky uh, getting everything uh, aligned precisely. So uh, I'll usually come in after the fact and set like whatever my initial focus point is. Um, and you can, of course, adjust your aperture after the fact. So I could go as wide as f16. And I'm going to go ahead and set it somewhere around f4 just for discussion's sake. But the key thing here is that to really appreciate what this does is that when I click the image, I can change the um, perspective and shift. And so if I rotate this around, you'll notice what happens is you get this 3D effect. See how it feels more 3D? And so I encourage you to kind of click and rotate around on your images to get this um, 3D effect when you've done the right thing. And um, it's kind of fun. So um, let's go ahead and go to another sample image. This one here, if I look at it, it's not especially good uh, depth. Everything is kind of in the background. So I'll come in here and um, this one, I didn't do an especially, especially good job at the depth. You see that's all orange, there's no blue, so that's kind of a bad thing. But there is still a bit of the 3D effect, especially in this area here. So if you watch this flower and I rotate this around, it does kind of feel like it's hovering around. And I think a lot of that has to do with um, the fact that this is a kind of shallow depth of field and um, just sort of the nature of this particular subject matter and the fact that I'm really kind of close and onto it. Um, if I go to this third one, you'll see that something interesting has happened here. Let's go ahead and set the focus. Um, is that I've lost my uh, stem. And if I kind of click around, I can see that it's it's right here. There is a stem to this flower. But um, the way the depth map was captured uh, for this particular one, we sort of lost that stem. We kind of lose it in some of the back ones as well. So the net result is that if I do that click and drag around, it looks like this flower is just levitating in the air. Now, for this one, if we look at the depth map, you'll see that we've got, you know, clearly that this is not actually let's go ahead and this blue one. Clearly that this is in the foreground. You know, we we have that very well, and you can see that. And then in the background, you'll see that every there's everything else. Um, but what's missing from here in the foreground is that stem. And so uh, there is a feature called export uh, editable depth map and you can take this into Photoshop and it's basically this here this is your depth map and you can edit it um, and essentially bring that area back in and so the people at Lytra recommend that you 
and bring also export an uh, image so that you have a layer with your JPEG image that you can use to kind of orient you on what's there and then use that as a guide to draw back in um, you know, the gray area for this and, and generally match it around the same colors. And then once you import that back into uh, Vitro Desktop, um, that problem's resolved. So for the viewer, I have my images here. <laughs> when it loads up, takes a few seconds, you're going to notice that there's a standard advanced player. Now, the advanced player, oops, let's close this. The advanced player is better at giving you this uh, 3D hover effect. And so that's the good part. The downside is, is it can create some weird artifacts. Let's actually go over to this image here. And you'll see these nasty artifacts that happen around the edge here. So if I go into standard player, the quality is a lot better. That problem isn't as pronounced. And then when I click and drag, I get my 3D effect. And so what again, I'm clicking and just dragging my mouse in circles to get that effect. Thank you very much for joining me. Please visit ronmarkblog.com where you can read my review about the Lytro Alum, as well as get discounts on uh, a lot of software and products, read my printing series, get recommendations on products, latest deals, and so much more. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.